All right, chapter 30. What happened today was all my fault. I should have listened. We should have all stayed home and spent the day together, but we didn't because of me. When I awoke this morning, it was raining, thunder, lightning, wind, a constant soaking downpour that laughed at umbrellas and raincoats. The air itself was gray and heavy, thick with too much moisture. I could hear it pounding on my window. Dad came into my room, sat down in our old reading chair. He held his wrists carefully. Mom had put his arm in a sling. Messy day out there, he said. I nodded. Your team got beat in one of the late rounds in D.C. last night, he told me. They got ninth place, a little bitty trophy. But they weren't my team anymore. I tried to pretend like I didn't care. I blinked real hard and faced the wall. I wish I could fix this for you, Melody, Dad said quietly as I headed out of the room. That made the tears fall for real. At first, I didn't want to go to school. I'd been excused because I was supposed to be in Washington, and if I went in, I'd have to sit all day in room H5 with Willie and Maria and Freddie. It seemed pointless. But as I thought about it, I changed my mind. I felt sorry for myself, shift to mad again. And the mad me decided that I was not going to sit at home like a kicked-around puppy. I was going to show up and let everybody know they didn't beat me. Mom leaned on the door just then and said, You want to stay home today? No one will blame you. I shook my head forcefully. No, no, no. I kicked the covers off my feet. Okay, okay. But the weather is ugly, and I woke up with a migraine. Plus, Penny is sick, and Butterscotch threw up on the carpet. I had to put her in the basement. She got bathed and she got me bathed and dressed and took me downstairs. Usually dad carries me up and down the steps, but with his arm out of commission, mom just grunted, lifted me, and did it herself. She eased me into my manual chair. My electric chair and lightning storms don't mix well. Hooked up my old plexiglass talking board, ditto for Elvera, then sat down to catch her breath. It looks like they're going to have we're going to have one stormy day, honey, she said as she glanced at the wet mess outside the window. As she ran a brush through my hair, she whispered, "I'm so sorry, my melody. So, so sorry for everything." I reached up and touched her hand. The rain continued to fall. She fixed me breakfast, scrambled eggs and cream of wheat, and fed me one spoonful at a time. She kept placing her palm against her forehead. She was unusually quiet. I wondered if she was thinking about how many times she had fed me, how many more times she'd have to do it. Wearing a floppy yellow hat and yellow duck-footed sleepers, Penny wandered into the kitchen, coughing and sneezing. Mom stopped feeding me, found a Kleenex, and wiped Penny's nose. She hated that, of course, so she screamed like she was being tortured by enemy spies. Normally, Mom makes a game of it and wipes Doodle's nose as well to make Penny tolerate it better, but I guess she didn't feel up to it this time. Then the phone rang. Mom answered. A spoon in one hand, the dirty Kleenex in another. In other. Hello? You what? You need me to come in? But I'm off today. I'm supposed to be in Washington. She paused. Long story. I cringed. Penny continued to howl. She ought to put Penny in the basement with the dog, I thought, frowning. Butterscotch scratched furiously at the basement door. Penny, please, Mom cried out, cupping her hand over the phone. I can't hear. Penny quieted a little, but only because she had squatted down on the floor and put both hands in Butterscotch's water bowl, sloshing water all over the floor. Mom listened for a minute, then said into the phone, How bad is the accident? Lots of injuries? Okay, I understand. I'll be there, but I have to wait until I get my daughter on the school bus. She hung up the phone and sighed, squeezing the tissue, uh, squeezing the tissue into her fist. I've got to go to the hospital, Chuck, she called out to Dad. Big pile up on the freeway. Are you dressed and ready? Dad came downstairs, still in his pajamas. I'm not going in today, he announced. You almost never take a day off, Mom said, a surprised frown on her face. My wrist is aching, the weather is awful, and Penny has a cold, he explained. Why don't you just stay home with me today, he said to me. But no, I kicked and shrieked and insisted on going to school. Can't miss today, I pointed. Must go, must go. Mom just put her head in her hands once more. Get Penny out of the dog's dish, was all she finally said. 
Dad ripped a bunch of paper towels from a roll, cleaned up Penny's mess, and wiped her nose with a wet paper towel. That started her screaming again. Her screeching became a shriek. That's when she reached over, knocked over the cup of orange juice on my tray. My clean blouse was a soppy mess. She did that on purpose, I thought angrily. Mom simply shrugged her shoulders and yanked off my shirt in one swift motion. She told Dad, Melody is determined to show up at school. Why, I do not know, but she may as well go. I couldn't explain to them that I wanted to see Catherine. Somehow, I felt like she'd talk to me and make me feel better. She's a college kid. She would know what to say. Besides, I had to give her that card. Today. It took Mom several minutes to find a new shirt for me until she remembered all the clean clothes and my suitcase. When she rolled that red suitcase into the kitchen, I looked at her, then looked away. I refused to cry anymore. For some reason, the bus came early that morning. I'd just gotten my clean shirt on, my book bag still needed to be packed with my lunch and Catherine's card, and I had to go to the bathroom. Even over the noise of all the rain and thunder, the honk of the bus horn blared clearly. It always sounded like a goose in pain. I heard Dad open the front door to wave the driver on. He yelled, Don't wait, Gus. She's not ready. The driver, a sandy-haired guy who's been on this route for a couple of years, beeped once more, then rumbled on. Gus is really cool and often waits a few minutes as parents hustle to get their children out of their house. Says, It just takes us a little... Or just longer. It just takes us longer sometimes to get it together in the morning. Melody, baby, why don't you just stay home with Dad and Penny today? Please, Mom asked as she lifted me off the toilet. It's just an icky day. I kicked and cried out again, shaking my head. No, no, no. I didn't know why it was so important, but I knew I had to show up. Maybe I wanted to let everybody know that the team had done what the team had done to me. I wasn't really sure. I only knew I had to go to school. Mom sighed and pulled up my jeans. When I got back in the chair, I pointed to thanks and mom. She shook her head and stuffed my lunch into my book bag. The rain didn't seem to be letting up, so mom took a deep breath and started the process of loading me into the car. When I ride the bus, I simply rolled down the ramp, down the driveway, and onto the bus lift and into a specially designed area of the bus that straps my chair into place. But when I ride in a car, it involves a whole process of taking apart and putting together me, my chair, and my stuff. Even with my manual chair, it's a pain. And Dad was no help. With his arm in a sling, he shrugged and tried to look like he was sorry. He couldn't come out and lend Mom a hand. I think he was enjoying it a little bit, and that made Mom even more upset. The rain and wind, if anything, had gotten worse. Mom had draped a huge plastic raincoat over me and my chair and another one over herself, but in seconds, the hood had blown off and our heads were soaked. We headed slowly down the wheelchair ramp, the wind whipping at us and the rain attacking from all sides. I thought it was exciting. I'd never seen the sky so dark at 8 in the morning. The thunder and wind made it feel like a scene out of a really good movie. My hair is short and curly, and I think it looks sort of cute when it's wet. Good thing. Mom hates it when her hair gets wet. It gets stringy and limp. I gotta admit, Mom with her hair wet should hide in a closet. She opened the car door on the passenger side, and the wind blew it shut. She did it again, this time using me and my chair as a doorstop. The front seat of the car of course was getting soaked. She lifted me into the seat, strapped me in, and began the process of process of collapsing my chair fortunately most of it is plastic and leather and metal but i knew it would stay damp all day even if somebody wiped it off real good when i got to school mom placed my chair along with my old communication board into the back of the suv when she shut the trunk she slammed it hard the rain continued to fall by the time she scooted into the driver's seat she was dripping she was a dripping mess and in a terrible mood I wish I could go back to bed, she said grumpily as she put the keys into the ignition. My head is killing me. Why did I agree did I agree to go to work? I'm supposed to be off today. With you in Washington, she sighs heavily. I kicked my legs in response, but only a little. I didn't want to upset her even more. That's when I glanced down and noticed she'd forgotten my book bag. Catherine's card. I reached over, grabbed Mom's arm, and pointed to my feet. What? 
she said, irritation in her voice. I kicked. I pointed. I grunted. Then I pointed to the house. Dad, who had changed into thick gray sweats, was standing there at the front door grinning, my denim book bag in his right hand. I could see Penny, still in her little yellow duck pajamas and now a yellow rain hat, standing behind him. She had Doodle and Mom's red umbrella in her hands. Lightning crackled. Thunder followed. The rain poured. I watched Mom's hand tighten on the steering wheel. She made a noise that sounded like something I would say, some almost a growl. Arr. She flung open the car door, stomped back up out into the storm, up the ramp, then snatched the book bag from Dad. She was sopping by the time she got back in the car. Dad waved his bandaged arm from the porch one last time, then turned and went back into the dryness of the house. I watched as the front door almost closed. That's when I saw a small bundle of yellow dragging a red umbrella dart out of the house. I saw her for only a second, but I saw. I screamed. I kicked. I flailed my arms. The winds, windows were almost completely fogged up, and they got even worse as I continued to act like I'd been possessed by demons. Mom looked at me as if I had lost my mind. She screamed at me, stop it. Are you crazy? But I wouldn't stop. I couldn't. I banged on the car window, pulled mom's shirt, hit her head, pinched her, or at least I tried to. I can't take any more, Melody, mom screamed over the thunder. I hate it when you get like this. You've got to learn to control yourself. Now quit. She put her hand on the keys to start the car. I screeched, reached over, and tried to pull the keys from her. I scratched the back of mom's hand. She smacked me on the leg. She'd never raised a hand at me before. Never. I still didn't stop screaming and kicking and jerking. I had to tell her. I had to tell her that Penny was out there. Never have I wanted words more. I was going out of my mind. I'm taking you to school, and I hope they keep you, Mom mumbled, mumbled under her breath. Angrily, she turned on the car. A rush of air started to clear the windows. The windshield wipers rocked at their fastest speed. I cried, huge, sobbing tears. I grabbed at Mom's arm once more, but all she did was shake my arm away. I could tell she felt like hitting me again, but she didn't. Her lips were tight. She looked out the rearview mirror. She put the car into reverse. I shrieked. I shrieked. I screeched. I yelled. The rain poured. The thunder roared. Slowly, the big car rolled backwards. I felt the soft thud. I became deadly silent. Mom stopped, turning her head slowly to the left. Then she turned slowly to the right, almost as if in slow motion. As she saw Dad coming come running out of the house, a look of stark alarm on his face. Penny, I heard him yell. Where's Penny? Mom rolled the window down on my side. Rain poured in onto me, but I didn't care. What do you mean? She's with you. Mom's voice was low, but sounded frantic and very, very scared. She got out of the car. She looked down. She screamed for a long, long time. Her screams were louder than the police sirens that eventually came shrieking around our corner, louder than the fire truck and ambulance sirens that followed them, louder than my silent cries. I sat there for what seemed like hours, basically forgotten, strapped in the front seat of the car as the rain poured in my open window. I ached with fear. Holy moly. I'll be back shortly with the next chapter. <coughs>